we have got to admit out loud that we as a nation have managed to recreate a caste-like system even as we profess to adhere to the values of colorblindness. And that we've all contributed to it, some by our silence, to the emergence of this new system. And we've got to wake up to the fact that much of what we have celebrated as racial progress in the United States is little more than a mirage when you walk up and get close to it. And I think we've got to start admitting our own criminality out loud. Our own criminality. Because each and every one of us is criminals. We're all criminals. Every person in this room has violated the law at some point in their lives. We've all done wrong, we've all broken the rules, we've all violated the law. But only some of us have gone to prison. You know, only some of us have been relegated to a permanent second class status for life. You know, everyone in this room has drank underage or experimented with drugs or gotten into a fist fight, which could be categorized as an assault. Or if the worst thing you've ever done in your life is speed 10 miles over the speed limit, you have put yourself and others at greater risk of harm than someone smoking marijuana in the privacy of their living room. But there are people doing life sentences in the United States for first time drug possession. So the idea that the criminals are them and that we need to figure out how to fix them to be more like us, we've got to let that go and recognize that this system of mass incarceration has emerged primarily by the roundup and the branding of criminals uh, as criminals of folks who have been engaged in precisely the same kinds of criminal activity that people of all colors engage in with roughly equal frequency. And by talking about our own criminality out loud, we help to reduce the shame and stigma associated with going to prison or being branded a criminal or being branded a felon. We've got to start creating safe spaces in our you know, schools, our churches, our communities for people you know, returning home from prison to talk about their own experience behind bars or that of their loved ones. Because as long as we remain silent and ashamed, we will remain passive, divided, and paralyzed in our efforts to achieve meaningful reform. And then we've got to organize. You know, piecemeal policy reform efforts are not going to work. We have to state out loud that our goal is to end mass incarceration in America and the branding of millions of people as second class citizens and do all of our work openly towards that end. We've got to build a movement for, for education rather than incarceration, jobs not jails, and we have got to affirm the basic dignity and humanity of all people. This has got to be at its bottom a human rights movement, not just a movement for greater equality or for civil rights, but a human rights movement, one that recognizes the dignity and humanity of all people, no matter who they are, or what they have done. Because it has been the refusal to recognize that dignity and that humanity of all people that has laid at the foundation of every caste system that has ever existed in the United States or anywhere else in the world. And it's our job, I firmly believe, to end not just mass incarceration, but the history and cycle of racial caste in America. So thank you very much for your time. I appreciate you having me. Mm-hmm.